Hey, Megan Scully, and this is the Liverpool Show and Delight now to be joined by Carl Spain. How are you getting on? Great, great. Uh, I've been so busy the last few months with all the travelling and all the festivals. Oh no, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you must be, what's your, like, nearly October now, you, all the festivals you had all summer. Yeah, well, it, it, they, um... We the, the 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 electric picnic would have been on there the other week. We'd be still recovering from that and uh, looking forward to the Galway festival. And uh, uh, they're all gone. Everything's gone. <laughs> it's gone. But you know what though? That's why I'm actually so glad that we're chatting right now because I'm like, finally, something's happening. There's actually going to be a festival on that we can actually go to that we can sit in a pub and we can actually enjoy and not have to be, you know, we we can be sitting there watching you on stage. Yes, it's, 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 it's the phoenix rising from the ashes of 2020. Um, we're going to be open up in Jerry Flannery's. Uh, you can't say Flannery's in Limerick because every pub oh. in Limerick is nearly called Flannery's or owned by some member of a Flannery family. Which Flannery's? So Jerry that? Flannery. What? The big ball. You know the big ball? Big, big, so big Flannery's. That's the one. I know. The, it's like, The one with the Flannery's giant rugby Flannery's. ball. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one. 13, 14. There's... Uh, it's such a beautiful venue out the back mm. built, you know, um, it's, I did a, a kind of a corporate event there a couple of years ago and I just went, oh my God, this is the perfect comedy room. Why isn't there comedy here? And, you're and like, I think they've done a couple of things themselves, but it's great now on Thursday night, um, we'll be doing a proper comedy gig, social distancing and all that. Uh, I can't wait. I really can't wait. Yeah. Carnival 2020 is back with a bang. Exactly. Um, and it's, it's funny, when I started being from Limerick, I, I didn't do a gig in Limerick for about a year into my career, which was in reality about 10 or 15 gigs. But I thought Limerick audiences would be, oh, they're going to they're gonna be toughest because I'm from Limerick. But they actually are great. They get behind you. I hope that's not tempting fate for Thursday night. <laughs> but they do, get be- <laughs> they do get behind you. And uh, I, I've, I've had some of my favourite nights ever doing comedy have been in Limerick. I have to say as well, the great thing about Limerick people and like Limerick jokes is they actually take them quite well. Because sometimes people say things and I'm like, will that be well received now? But they love it. Like, li- like, you know, I think like they love when someone like, especially when you're from Limerick, you can get away with all the, the Limerick jokes, the Limerick sayings, and they're not going to say anything to you because they'll, they'll laugh. Them <laughs> like, yeah, he's one of our own. He can say that. Yeah, exactly. But there is that, there's that looking out, you know, people... Um, I've had it when I, when I started and you'd be going up and you'd be, I'd be doing jokes about being from Limerick or whatever and people say, oh, it's a terrible place. And I go, have you ever actually been to Limerick? And they go, no, like, but it says, well, maybe I know more than, than you know about Limerick. But uh, uh, Limerick, the Limerick, I think the, the, the Limerick person can be a little bit contrary at times as well. So maybe we don't help ourselves, you know, in that people, oh, let them think that, let them, let them think the worst, you know, if that keeps them people away all the better, like, you know. But just, we're, 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 we're a nice person all, all the same, you know? Well, absolutely. Like, I was saying, I'm originally from Galway, but I feel like now that I, if I, like, dare leave Limerick, I'd say now I'll be pulled back because it's kind of like, hold on a second now, you're one of us now. Now, you're here a certain <laughs> couple of years, you're, you're not going back. So, like, a lot of people just assume I'm from Limerick now as well, and I'm like, yeah, sure, look, I'll roll with it. I was like, I love the place. It's great crack. Have you, have you picked up any Limerick sayings now since you've been down here? I, I, I wasn't sure if I had I thought I hadn't but then when I come home with weekends mom is like what you say there and then I'm like come here won't you and she's like what and I'm like oh yeah sorry that's Limerick I'm like no yeah so I do and I find like I'll spend a weekend in Galway and I'll come back to Limerick and everyone's like you've been in Galway for the weekend <laughs> I'm like, yeah it's not it's not as bad as someone going off on a J1 and coming back with an American accent though so it's you know, it's all right. Like, but you know, if I said like, you know, oh, I should go out some night and swing the tacky, would you know? Would you know what? I know, is that an even like the whole, whole tackies thing? It's like, oh, I got my tackies on. Initially, when I got to Limerick, I was like, what are tackies? And then I got, I, got, I, got <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, it's like that's like the most unusual word I've ever heard for a pair of runners in my life. But I, I, I know now I feel like I'm getting more into the lingo, and I'm like, I hear things now, and yeah, you just it just kind of comes second nature. It, it seems funny to be talking about the huge cultural differences in a place when you're living from an hour away. You know, it's not like you've moved country. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not, like, oh, yeah. I, learning, learning the language was so tough, you know, when I moved that hour away from my home. 
you know, I could commute to Limerick and do my job. <laughs> I could, but then I'd miss out on all the Limerick crack and on the Thursday nights going out in 1314. Oh, brilliant link, brilliant link. And we, we, the first one went out, we have Joe Rooney, um, who everyone would know from Father Ted. He was Father Damo, and he's going to tell us whether Blur or Oasis are the best um, <laughs> on oh. Thursday night. And Tom O'Mahony, who everyone, uh, anyone with, uh, with a child would have been to the Panto in, in UCH in the last while. Tom has been in the Panto the last four years, I think it is now, um, in UCH, and he's done plays, he's done everything. And we also have Sinead Quinlan, who won the Ray Darcy comedy competition there. Uh, so, we're putting out a strong lineup. Strong, strong lineup. First game of the season, you know. There's no holding back now. No, love, no easing into it. There's been plenty, plenty of time to be kind of, you know, relaxed and recharged and refreshed and just ready to go. So you might as well hit the ground running. Exactly, and it's all socially distanced. As you know, we're putting you all in these um, full hazmat plastic pods with the comedy piped in. I may be exaggerating slightly, but um, no, it's it's. I, I'm genuinely very excited. It's a great thing about doing gigs now is um, I've done about five since uh, the lockdown, since the restrictions lifted a bit. And um, every gig is like Italian 90. You know, the, the excitement, everyone's mad to be out. You know, the comedians who haven't gigged in months, you know, are just, you know, oh my God. I'm, you know, so there's an extra edge and energy to the gig that hasn't been there before. So it's not just a run of the mill. It's going to be, it's going to be electric. But everyone as well, I feel like now we're going to look back in 2020, we're all going to remember our, as you said, our first gig back. We're going to remember our first festival back, our first time in a nightclub. Well, if that'll happen again. But I think we're all just going to like, <laughs> you know, like that. We're all going to, as you said, it's like Italian 90 or it's like uh, when you turn 18, you go out for the first time or you go on your J1 for the first time. It's like, all, it's all these firsts again for us. Like, I feel like, I haven't, like, I haven't got a chance to go to any of these wet pubs yet, but I'm, like, wait, dying to get back to Limerick now so I can hit up a few of them just because I can do it now. And I'm, like, I can sit in a pub and I don't have to have a <laughs> I can't wait. There's something nice about that, just you can ignore, the you know, when you can sit somewhere or do something familiar, you know, you can ignore the madness of the world outside. Like, you know, I, I, keep, I keep calling it, you know, the whole COVID crisis, the war. I keep saying to people, oh, we'll see you after the war. But it's, it's hardly a war, you know, it's like, um, oh, God, yeah, we had to queue to get into a supermarket once. That wasn't necessarily what happened in World War II, yeah. you know. <laughs> We're, as wars go, it's, 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 quite, it's quite gentle, you know. It's just a matter of, like, you know, all right, just keep a bit of distance from people. I think I'm at the best age for the COVID, mm -hmm. you know. I'm in my 40s. I, 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 I dread being a young person like you now going, I can't, I can't do anything. That would, have, that would have destroyed me, you know, I'll say early 20s, Megan. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, I'll take that. I'm actually uh, nearly <laughs> early 30s. <laughs> oh, well, oh, but God. I have oh. to say, do you know what the hardest thing is? It's hard being young and single in the lockdown because you can't, you can't date anyone. And, like, if you do, you have to kind of socially distance date them. And then it's just really awkward because you don't know if you actually like the person because they're all the way across the other side of the road. <laughs> it wouldn't be, it would be um, that thing of if you if you'd just broken up with someone at the end of February, you know, if you'd, if you'd been in a relationship and said, I'll get Valentine's out of them and then broken yeah. up, then suddenly there's a lockdown. Hey, um, <laughs> that stuff I said about you, um, well, maybe you should move back in, you know? Well, but uh, yeah, I've oh, got I know. Poor young yeah. people, oh my God, poor young people. And no nightclubs, you know, at least you have all the apps now, you know, that you can have virtual relationships. Isn't that something? <laughs> I don't know. Now I'm like, yeah, the date naps are just in a whole other ball game. It's like, oh, because a lot of people are actually that weren't on them have kind of been pushed onto them now because they're like, okay, this is the only thing I can do. So then suddenly it's like, ah, but look, you never know on Thursday night there could be a few uh, a Bumble and Hinge and Tinder people in the audience oh, that are on there. That could be, it's a great idea for a date, you know, <laughs> that you can get out. And, and comedy, regardless, at any time, is a great idea for a date because you know, if you don't know the person and you find out what they laugh at and what they yeah. don't laugh at, you know, <laughs> so it can reveal, it can reveal an awful lot of stuff without having to ask any questions. So, yeah. So if oh. you can get a date for Thursday, Megan. Oh, yeah. that, that's my next, 
That'll be my next thing now to find a date Thursday. But I don't live. I won't don't live with a person. Um. So and they're not part of my bubble. So they're gonna have to sit in the other side of the room. I can't sit beside them. Ah, yeah, yeah. That'll be that, that. Then, then you'll know that they're really interested in you if they're going. You know, <laughs> if they're willing to wait for another year before they can even kiss you. That that's that to me shows commitment. I mean, there's one way to find out <laughs> who's going to be in it for the long haul. Wouldn't it be terrible to wait it that year and then go, oh my God, he's a terrible shift. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably going to happen to loads of people. It will. I, yeah, I, I feel, you know, what's that going to do to the population? Well, I think we've been having, we're having a bit of a baby boom at the moment. So thankfully all the couples have, you know, they've stepped up to the mark. <laughs> it's literally, it, we're very much in the... God, there's nothing on Netflix, is there? <laughs> we've watched everything. We've hiked every mountain. We've done every walk. We've baked all the school food. <laughs> we've made banana bread. There's nothing left to do but one thing. Well, it, it would help couples as well with the kind of, oh, Jesus, if we to go around to your mother's again, and it's like, oh, we better not go around. You'd never know. <laughs> Have a bit of a cough. <laughs> Until we get tested, we can't go around. I, I couldn't possibly visit my mother-in-law. No, 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 no. God, you couldn't mix with the in-laws. Because imagine if you gave an in-law COVID. No, couldn't do it. Couldn't even chance it. The guilt. The guilt you'd feel. Absolutely. You have to put your in-laws first. God, wait. That's, that's a mission now, Megan, to, um, to get out there. You know, get you a nice Limerick man. Like, you know, with, you know I'm, I, I, you should check if any of the, the Munster players are available. Is what you should do. <laughs> I'll invite them all to Jerry's now on uh, Thursday night. Do you know, that's a perfect place for it. I, I genuinely wasn't making the, the sneaky link. But yeah, oh God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All the, all the rugby players are huge comedy fans. Yeah, I might, I might get on to Jerry Fanny who's there, who set up a few tables there in the front row and have like reserved for Munster and then my friends and I right beside them. Yeah, yeah. Are your friends single as well? Actually, there's a gang of us. Oh, jeez, that's... See, that's, that's, that's the worst is when, well, if there's one or two in a relationship and the rest are single, you know, they'll try and set you up with your, their boyfriend's horrible friends. <laughs> oh, that's, and, 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 you know, have you ever been set up with someone when you've literally gone, this person couldn't possibly know me and set me up with this idiot? <laughs> More than once and you're like, what? like my mother has tried to set me up with loads of people. Loads. And I'm like, ma'am, please stop because I don't even think you know who your daughter is anymore. Yeah, oh, that's sad. That's that. The one I used to hate was when you go to weddings when you're single and you'd be put at, with some single people at the same table. But like, I'd know the girl <laughs> and they go, oh, you're my, boy, you're my boyfriend for the evening. And I went, no, I'm not being tied down, to, <laughs> tied down to you. I want to go out and try and see if I can find someone as well. <laughs> they were using me as a kind of, well, you mind me. You make me look Less conspicuously single. <laughs> I'll be with the yeah, days. I, I, was that, I was that guy. God, yeah, God, oh, with God, God yeah. do all the fun stuff we wanted. There'll be no, no more weddings anymore. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't go. I'm, I'm outside your family bubble. <laughs> <laughs> well, at my age, that most of the weddings would be second time around anyway. So <laughs> Even wilder again. I don't approve. I don't approve. I'm staunchly religious. I couldn't possibly go to this and endorse <laughs> it with my, my celebrity status. <laughs> I stay at home and uh, stay away from my in-laws. <laughs> Karen. We're up in Galway, you should come along any Tuesday night we're in Galway in yeah. the Roaching Dove. Another great spot. Um, uh, once, a, once a month in Thursday, um, we'll be in Flannery's, Jerry Flannery's 1314, which is the year it was opened, isn't it? <laughs> Big Jerry's with the big football. Or big yeah, rugby ball, I yeah. Out the ball. You can't miss it. What else would you be doing? Exactly. You know, what else would you be doing? I know. So, that's exactly. Look, and I said, normality's been restored. We're getting to go to a venue and actually watching a comedy gig on stage in real life, not through a camera. So we won't even know ourselves. The excitement of it. The excitement of it. Oh, and Megan, Paul, Paul Meskel is coming on Thursday night. Oh, I heard he's single, actually. <laughs> are you, are we, as... Is it going to be like reenactments of normal people? Uh, um, well, that's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what part of this. Football. Yeah, yeah, he's going to. 
he's going to dress up in his school uniform and ignore you. <laughs> like most guys. <laughs> so that's episode one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can stay chatting here for ages, but uh, I know my mother's listening outside the door here to me, and uh, we have to uh, get ourselves ready for Thursday night. Inside, as you said, 13 14, Carnival is back. COVID is pretty much over Thanks now. Thanks a million. Stage again. Pleasure to chat to you, and we'll see you sure one of the nights inside in Jerry's. Thanks a million, Megan. Take care. Cheers. <laughs>